Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We're gonna be talking about my hair today, all my favorite hair tips. I am in my bedroom today because I got a new bedroom set and I just wanted to show you guys. I'm doing a wedding glow up series, which I know I keep saying, but I do have more videos coming out on that. I'm gonna do like a whole glow up routine and things I've been doing throughout the days, but I'm gonna do it all in one video. Anyway, within that, I got a request to go over all of my hair tips. I do have a video up where I talk about how to manifest your desired hair, and I talk more so about the mindset in that video, but today I'm just gonna be talking about just my actual routine, products I use, and tips and tricks I've learned along the way. I've had pretty long hair most of my life, a few years ago I did cut it pretty short and grew it back uh, but I've always had pretty long hair and I've been intentionally trying to take care of it since I was younger so I do have a few tips tried and true that I know work and want to share that with you guys in case you are wanting to start taking better care of your hair and or grow it out now would it be a video of mine if I didn't first talk about mindset with hair if you guys watch the channel, you know, when I got sick a few years ago, I lost a bunch of my hair. I think a lot of people uh, that got the virus had a similar experience. And it's just a stress response to your body. Your body, when it has that high amount of a stress, it responds by losing hair. It's just something our body naturally does. But it was very disheartening. I was really stressed out. I was worried my hair would never grow back. I was worried I was going to go bald. <laughs> it was stressful. Your mindset and stress is going to either make it better or make it worse. If we are constantly worried about our hair, it's not going to get any better. And the reality is your hair is just going to take a while to grow back or grow long. It just is. I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys you can grow your hair a few inches overnight. I don't care. Like you can you can tell me I have limiting beliefs. I really don't care. The reality is is that it's not going to. I'm not going to promote that obsessive anxiety-ridden mindset where I'm telling you, "Yeah, you can manifest your hair to grow this much in a certain amount of time and then it doesn't and then you think you're doing something wrong. You think it's not working for you. You think you're suck at manifesting. You think that your hair is never going to change. I'm not going to do that to you. I just don't feel good about that, okay? I'm not going to tell you that you can manifest your hair overnight to grow inches. I just don't think it's possible. And anyway, so I'm going to be realistic with you guys. Will you get your desired hair? Yes. Is it going to take some time? Yeah. Is it going to take forever? No. But it's going to take some time. One of the biggest things when I am wanting to have a change with my hair, I just intentionally do my best to not look at it. I'll put it up in a braid, in a bun, in a clip, and just be sure I'm doing the things that I'm tell I'm going to tell you in this video, and I just don't look at it. I don't look at my scalp. I don't look if I'm growing hair. I don't measure my hair. If you're measuring your hair to see how long it's growing, stop. Just stop. Enjoy your life. There's more to life. There's so many more things you can spend your energy on. If you have any anxiety towards your hair, you're being obsessive, you're checking it all the time, really, you just have to stop. I'm telling you guys, it's never worked for me. You have to let go and just know these things are gonna work. I would be surprised if I give you my hair care routine and it's not working at some point for you, okay? Okay, so you just want to get the mindset, tell yourself you have beautiful hair, tell yourself that your hair grows fast. If you catch yourself telling yourself that your hair grows super slow, stop. Make sure you're telling yourself your hair grows fast and just write it out. <laughs> also, really quick, health, uh, I mean nutrition and water intake really does affect your hair. Just be sure that you're eating whole nutrient-rich food most of the time and that's gonna be the nutrients that your hair needs. I also did have a lot of success with the supplement Viviscal uh, when I was growing my hair back from when I got the virus and lost a bunch of hair. So I just wanna start off with those things. Now let's get into the actual routine of what I do to take care of my hair, to keep it nice and long and healthy. Okay, let's start off with shampoo and conditioner just because I feel like that's the thing that we most of us do. 
Now, really quick, there's a big trend on washing your hair, not washing your hair. Washing your hair isn't good for your hair. The reality is, is that you can wash your hair every single day and it does not affect your hair at all whatsoever. The reason that the whole don't wash your hair trend is popular is because a lot of people heat style their hair. So if you're blow drying and curling your hair every time you wash it, then yeah, you're going to want to not wash your hair so that you aren't heat styling your hair every single time you wash your hair. But for me, I have naturally wavy curly hair. I just found a routine that works for me without heat styling it. Do I heat style my hair? Yes, I'm going to get to that in a little bit. But since I don't heat style my hair every day, I sometimes wash my hair every day or every other day. But I can, you can wash your hair every day if you're not heat styling it. If you heat style your hair, no matter what, every single time you wash it, then yeah, of course, that's when you're going to want to skip washes. That's when you're going to want to be able to extend your wash out. When I do heat style my hair, I don't wash my hair for about four days to try, you know, to just keep my style in there and enjoy the fact that I heat style my hair without re-damaging my hair every single time. So I do want to say that if you do not heat style your hair, you can wash your hair every day if you want to. If you heat style your hair, that's when you're going to want to skip washes as much as possible. And I'll go into heat styling tips in just a little bit. But for shampoo and conditioner, for my hair growth and for my hair personally, I love Bondi Boost. I've used it for years now. It just is my favorite shampoo. I've tried to use other shampoos and conditioners, but I just always go back to this one. It has um, aloe, which is really soothing for your hair and nourishing for your hair. And it has rosemary oil along with a bunch of other essential oils. But as you guys will see in a little bit, I love rosemary oil for hair growth. It's been scientifically proven to work uh, as well, if not better, than minoxidil, which is Rogaine. And I'm not a big fan of putting a bunch of chemicals in my body or on my scalp like minoxidil. And once you stop using it, your hair does stop uh, growing and you do end up losing the hair that you did use. But with rosemary oil, that does not happen. Some people might find it easier to use minoxidil because you can just put it onto your dry hair, but, and you know, rosemary oil is an oil, so you have to figure out how to use it in a way, but I am just a fan of rosemary oil um, more so. Anyway, so it's in the shampoo and conditioner and it has other things like peppermint oil. I just love the shampoo and conditioner. It's really, truly one of my favorites. I would recommend it. I'm not sure if it works for every single hair type. Of course, shampoo and conditioner is like I don't know, skincare, whatever works, you know, you might, things might work better for you than for me and for your hair type. So just, I do try to switch it up every once in a while, but I do go back to it just to, because I feel like your hair does need a little switch up on shampoo and conditioner, but I always just go right back to it. And I'd like to say I did try the Olaplex shampoo and conditioner and I was not a fan. Okay, now let's go into everyday styling. I did mention that I air dry my hair most of the time. I feel very blessed and lucky that I have a curl wave pattern that I like and that is easy to style. I know that you know some people that have like really really curly hair might not have that same you know easeability or accessibility to that, but that's fine. I can't give tips on that because I don't have that type of hair. But if you have straight hair or wavy curly hair and you can air dry your hair, that's going to be the thing that keeps it the healthiest and if you do want to curl your hair let's say I do want to curl my hair or use a heat tool on my hair I will let my hair air dry and then I'll curl it unless I'm using my Dyson for everyday styling I just I like to use this air dry cream I love this one there's another one I used to use it's like fave four or fav four I would get at Sally's and that one's really good for people that have straight hair. You put it into your hair when it's damp and it'll make your straight hair a little wavier. And for me, I can make my hair look pretty curly. If I do like a whole routine, I can make it look really curly. If I use like gel and do all plopping and all this stuff, right? But that's just like too much work for me on an everyday basis. So I like to use this like products that are meant for straight hair to make straight hair wavy and it makes my wavy curly hair like a loose wave and I just find that easiest to work with and when I don't use this like when I let my hair just air dry with no product in just because I'm being lazy or something my hair is a lot curlier I notice than when I 
put this cream in it's more of like a it's like a wave pattern that works all together so I know like not everyone has that same hair type but if you have like if you think you have frizzy hair I would see if you have wavy hair because I feel like a lot of people have wavy hair and they think they just have like straight frizzy hair um, or even if you do have that type of hair type just try something out like this because it might surprise you it might end up making your hair really um, look really good and this just eases the frizz it's just really easy to I just throw this in most of the days this is the only product I use after I shampoo and condition my hair sometimes when my hair is feeling extra dry I will put a little bit of Olaplex on the ends I do put Olaplex in also on the ends when I'm going to heat style on top of my heat styler because I like to condition the ends a little more and this has a heat protectant in it as well just to really nourish the ends that's what you want to focus on protecting when you get heat styling I will talk about that more in a second but yeah for everyday uh, styling I just use this product and of course this is going to be unique to you but if you can find a product like this that you can just do everyday style just to keep your hair nourished it has really nice ingredients to keep it nice and hydrated and conditioned that's going to be helpful with your with your hair okay now let's talk about heat styling i really like to limit heat styling as much as possible when i was younger my hair was a lot thicker and i'm like my hair is is it ever going to get that much thicker because it was like i see pictures and my hair was dense but I spent a good amount of my high school years, actually all of my high school years, frying my hair off uh, with um, too much heat, heat styling it basically every single day, straightening it, flat ironing it, curling it every day, not taking care of it. It just kind of ruined my hair. So these tips are really coming from experience because I have really fried my hair in the past. There's times when I feel like heat styling my hair more like when I just get bored and want to switch it up so then I'll go through like a month where I am you know using my Dyson or blow drying my hair a little more often and that's fine I just make sure to that's when I start to extend my washes and I always make sure to use a heat protectant always use a heat protectant I will say I'll give myself credit I did even use a heat protectant in high school so at least I did that I love the Amica one this smells really good and I don't need I don't need to use Olaplex when I use this because this is kind of like a little oily so just be careful not to spray it in your roots. I really take heat protection really seriously because it really does make a difference when you use a heat protectant so you know I'll part my hair in like twos I'll do this side and this side and I'll kind of I have like a lot of hair I'll try to do it in there as well. This one be sure to keep on the ends I do like having two heat protectants because I do like to pre protect my hair a lot like I said I'll even use the Olaplex which has heat protectant in it and this is from Wella I'm not sure where you get this I still have my massage therapy license so I do get to log on to professional cosmetology websites and buy professional hair products and this was on one of the websites I used uh, Cosmoprof and this was on there and I really like this and I like it because it's not as like heavy or oily as this one I'll like use both <laughs> I'll spray this more on the on um, the crown of my head and the roots because it doesn't make my hair oily sometimes I just use this and the Olaplex it really just depends I'm out of the Amica one right now I just still have the bottle so you want to heat style your you want to protect your hair with a heat protectant I don't know if that's what I've been saying. Maybe I've been seeing heat styler, but a heat protectant, you want to be sure to use that when you are going to heat style your hair. If you're going to curl your hair, I would, or flat iron it, I would, if you can, plan it out so your hair air dries. Maybe like wash your hair the day before, let it air dry, and then the next day you can apply your heat protectant and then style it then. Uh, obviously, some like sometimes I have to blow dry my hair and heat style it all in one go life happens sometimes you just need to get ready or something it's fine but I'm talking about majority of the time I would avoid doing that as much as you can there is I mean people are so creative now there's like a bunch of heatless curls and heatless styles online now so I'm sure you can get creative with those you know see if something works like that for you okay now we're gonna talk about treatments while wow, this video is already really long <laughs> okay treatments okay so I've been using I've tried so many treatments on my hair and I've tried buying like so many hair oil treatments that are pre-made and I have just found the most success with keeping it really simple, 
taking a carrier oil, which is something like apricot, almond, I don't know, grape seed oil, and mixing it with rosemary oil and applying that to my scalp as a hair growth treatment. I uh, will show you guys here. I have, so I don't have my rosemary oil essential oil bottles in the bathroom, but I just took this bottle that used to be rose water and I mixed it in here. This is just apricot oil with like, I don't know, eight to 10 drops of rosemary oil and I keep it on here. I actually switched the caps of these bottles. This one, this is my glycolic acid. It has a spray that used to be on this rose water one and this is the little cap that came on the glycolic acid. That way I can just like kind of pour it onto my scalp and massage it in, keep it super simple. It's what I found the most effective and what I recommend the most. For a, a long time, I would stop myself from oiling my hair or my scalp because I would look online and people recommended to keep the oil treatment in for 30 minutes to an hour and I'm like, Sometimes I'm so busy, I don't have time to put it in for that long. So what I've found very successful is just a nice mindset shift. And if I know I'm gonna take a shower soon and I have like 10 minutes, I'll just put in the oil just for 10 minutes because I figure it's better to put it in for a little bit than not put it in at all. Or let's say I'm gonna take a shower, but I can see that I can put the dishes in the dishwasher, put away some laundry, because I'm gonna do that anyway in the same go. I'll just put the oil treatment in, do that chore really quick, and then take a shower. So at least it's in there for a little bit. And then sometimes, like the other day, Monday when I did my live stream, I had my whole hair oiled, uh, scalp to end, and I wasn't gonna see anyone or go out into public like all day. So I just left it in like that all day, and I was able to do that that day but most of the time i'm just throwing it in maybe i know i'm going to take a shower after i go to the gym so i'll just throw it into my hair before i go to the gym and it's in there for like an hour and i've just found that a lot easier than trying to make it like a whole thing i used to try to it was like a whole ordeal i had to oil my hair i'm gonna talk about apple cider vinegar a little bit more in a little bit but as a tip for getting oil out of your hair like an oil treatment without shampooing your hair too much or sometimes I, if you put too much oil in your hair you have to end up washing your hair too much and I feel like that does more bad than good so an apple cider vinegar rinse will really help get that oil out and I'll talk about that in a minute but yeah just keep it simple guys get a carrier oil I have this big bottle I got from Thrive Market of apricot oil it's literally lasted me forever and I just mix it in that bottle with rosemary oil and I throw it in my hair sometimes I'm sure there's more rosemary oil than apricot oil. Sometimes it's like more watered down. It doesn't matter, just keep it simple. It really does not matter. Just <laughs> use your best judgment. Just don't put that rosemary oil directly onto your scalp because that will burn your scalp and cause dryness and dandruff and it makes your hair fall out. It's kind of not the point of using rosemary oil. I've also found rosemary oil just to be the most effective. It makes your hair thicker, makes it grow faster, longer. I just feel like that's like the best oil for your scalp. <laughs> Another treatment I do is oiling my ends, especially recently. I felt like my hair was being re was getting really dry, so I was just intentionally again getting out of that mindset that I have to oil my hair and it has to be this whole huge process. Sometimes I'll even I like to use argan oil for the ends of my hair. My hairstylist recommended that, so I use argan oil for that. So I'll just um, put, again, split my hair, and I'll put the, the oil in at the ends of my hair, sometimes directly right before I shower. Like, I don't even leave it in for that long. I'm just going to oil it right before I shower, but I still figure it's better than not doing it at all. Sometimes, again, like the chore thing, if I have something to do, I know I'm gonna shower soon, I'll just oil my ends. Um, sometimes I'll oil my scalp and my ends. I really just make it easy, whatever is easiest for you in that moment. As long as you're doing it, you know, once or twice a week, it's gonna be really beneficial for your hair. But keep it simple. Don't make it complicated, keep it simple so that you can follow through with the new habit that you're trying to build. Yeah, I found that even just throwing it in before I shower has really helped really condition my hair again, and my hair has gotten a lot softer and I'm very grateful for that so that my hair looks nice and healthy and shiny in my pictures for my wedding okay next treatment I have done the Olaplex number 
two, three, I don't know, the, the popular treatment, you guys know pro probably. I did like it, I don't know, I haven't seen that much of a difference. I can say that Gunner's, like the top of Gunner's hair, my fiance, is out in the sun and it started to get a little fried because it's so hot here, it's like basically he's heat styling his hair, right? And I did put a little bit in his hair and it made it way softer after one use. I left it in for like 10 minutes, so I think it does work. I really want to try that K18 treatment. I haven't tried it yet, but my hair, since I don't he style my hair, I don't really have like a lot of breakage, which I'm going to talk about breakage in another, in just a minute. Oh my God, did I delete all my notes? Oh no, okay. Uh, hair masks are good too. I just don't have one right now. Again, I've just really liked oiling my hair. I feel like it's easy and less complicated, but I would be open to trying hair masks. I've tried you know, Moroccan oil hair masks or the Bondi Boost hair mask. Yeah, they're good too. I really want to try the Amica, the Amica hair mask, um, but I haven't gotten that. And then also apple cider vinegar rinse as a treatment for your hair. Apple cider vinegar rinse. I'll talk about how I do it. Yeah, I'm going to talk about apple cider vinegar rinse more when I talk about my the scalp health, but that's a really good treatment for adding shine to your hair and softness. Also rosemary water, I'll make rosemary water tea um, as a treatment too. You guys have seen that in videos before. I just brew a tea with rosemary and water. I put it in a glass spray bottle and I spray it in my hair a few times a day, once a day. Also when it's almost time to dump it because it's been in the refrigerator too long, I'll just take it and do like a rosemary water rinse and that makes your hair so soft. Gunner really likes to use the rosemary water as well. And then the apple cider vinegar rinse can really help get oil buildup out of your hair. It balances the pH, it's really good for your scalp. And again, I just keep it simple. I have this plastic cup that I just keep in the shower. When I wanna do an apple cider vinegar rinse, I'll grab the cup, go to my kitchen, I'll just like quickly pour some apple cider vinegar in there. I don't know, it's probably like a tablespoon. Sometimes it's two tablespoons. It, keep it simple guys, it doesn't have to be exact. And then I'll just take that cup with apple cider vinegar into the shower and I fill it up with the shower water and then I rinse my hair with it. Super easy, very helpful. I'll talk about that again more in a minute. Okay, now let's talk about preventing breakage. <laughs> I know there's a lot to this video. Number one thing for preventing breakage is to brush your hair gently. I used to brush my hair really aggressively because I would watch growing up my cousin brush her hair and she has really thick, curly like ringlet curl hair and so she could brush her hair like that because she has a lot of hair so i thought i should brush my hair like that but no i was wrong it was causing breakage don't ever take your brush and go down trying to brush your hair you're it gets knotted you're gonna break it it's gonna break don't do that grab your hair take a minute get into the habit i brush the ends first okay and then you go a little bit more and then you brush the ends here. I could even do it finger combing. And then brush here. And then you can brush from your scalp to your ends. But do not just grab your brush and try to yank it through and brush your, no. No, no, no. Brush it gently. It's going to make a difference. Prevent breakage um, by brushing your hair gently, okay? To prevent breakage, avoid super tight hairstyles, really slick back buns, really tight ponytails, um, unless you really, you know, like that, but it can break your hair. Even changing your part every once in a while, because I notice that when I leave my middle part on too long, it'll start to get, like, really thin, so it's good to just switch up your hair part every once in a while, even if you want to switch it up before you go to bed or just when you're home. Because I know sometimes when you switch it up, it like gets really voluminous. It's like really weird. But even if you're just at home, move your hair around from your hair part to kind of uh, prevent it from breaking or thinning out in just one area. Put your hair up when you're in the car. I feel like when I'm in the car and all of this hair is in the back and I'm like pushed up against the car seat, turning my head. It just is going to break your hair because it's like rubbing against the seat. Unless you have leather seats, then it might not be like that. Also, on the couch, I put my hair up because it's so long and like I'll just lean back and be on my hair. It gets pulled, it gets yanked. To avoid that, just put your hair up. Those things do build up and matter. So anytime that you see that your hair is getting a lot of friction with something, just put it up to prevent breakage. Another thing um, is to do a silk pillowcase at night. I'm not going to show you mine because why? very dirty. <laughs> but 
but use a silk pillowcase so that has really made a difference in my skin and my hair so I love using a silk pillowcase to prevent breakage as well don't do the whole like classic towel thing when you're out of the shower and then you twist it and put it up use a t-shirt I have this t-shirt as an example you guys see me wear this t-shirt all the time <laughs> I don't use this one for my hair my hair one is in the bathroom but it has like my old work on there so I'm not going to show you guys but just any t-shirt and I just some I've seen people like cut up the t-shirt I just use the t-shirt itself like open it up and the the part that goes over you know the hole of the not the little not the head hole but the big one <laughs> and then you just use it as a towel like that The t-shirt is just a lot more gentle than our towels that we use on our body. I use a t-shirt. <laughs> okay, now we're going to talk about scalp health for hair growth. I used to have a really bad dandruff. I've had dandruff, I don't know, since I was younger, like teens. Like, it's something I've always struggled with. My mom has it to this day so it's just something I guess like runs in our family. If I don't take care of my scalp, I get a lot of, I get a lot of dandruff. If I'm drinking enough water, I do notice that it's better so again, Hydration and nutrition really do pay, play an impact on our on our hair health. Also, using the oil with rosemary on my scalp, that really helps with the hydration of my scalp, avoiding dandruff. Using a scalp massager would be really good for your scalp health just to get like more blood flow on there. And also scalp massages will also make your hair grow faster and thicker. Scalp massages and rosemary oil is like all you really need and some consistent dedication to it and your hair will get thicker and longer. Like I was saying before, apple cider vinegar is also really good for that. I found that apple cider vinegar rinses once a week have really just kept my dandruff at bay. It does not happen if I do my apple cider vinegar rinse. If I forget to do my apple cider vinegar rinse that you want to just do that once a week, I my scalp gets itchy, my scalp gets dandruff. I just love the apple cider vinegar for apple cider vinegar rinse for my hair for that reason it balances the ph and it makes your hair so shiny and your hair does not smell like vinegar it does not smell like vinegar it might a little bit like right after or the the, the bathroom might smell like vinegar for a little bit but after your hair dries it's not going to smell like vinegar and again guys keep it simple I just keep the cup in the shower, grab a little bit of apple cider vinegar and throw water in from the shower and then use that. It's super easy. It doesn't take me any longer than it normally would. And it's really just helped my hair so much, especially with controlling the dandruff. Lastly, I want to talk about haircuts and hair dyeing. I am not a fan of dyeing my hair. I think people look best with their natural hair color. Uh, but I know some people really like to dye their hair. So if you do dye or bleach your hair, I mean for bleaching, I really don't have any tips. I don't really bleach my hair, so I don't know. I did lighten my hair last year. I got a high lift, which is just with hydrogen peroxide, and it wasn't really damaging to my hair, and it did lighten it a little bit, but it doesn't lighten your hair that much. But if you want to add a little dimension, you can do that. Uh, if you have darker hair because I was getting kind of tired of just having really really dark hair for so long because I hadn't dyed it in like 10 years I did try bleaching in high school but anyway it didn't go well and I didn't want to dye my hair again but I did get tired of like the darkness of my hair but now I kind of miss my dark hair and my natural hair color so I'm excited for it to grow out this last thing I'm going to talk about is haircuts and for some people you know I've seen videos online or tips they're like oh my hair finally grew and I just stopped cutting my hair and yeah, that, you know, that might work for you. And for me, I have to go get my hair cut regularly. And there was, when I, in high school, you guys, I remember I told you I fried my hair and it was super, super damaged. And I wanted to grow my hair long and healthy again. I was going to go, I was getting a haircut almost every two months, but I was, my hairstylist was amazing at that time. And I was like, listen, I told her my goals and I was like, I need you to cut the tiniest bit off of my hair. Like the littlest bit. Like she would dust my hair like this much hair, like so little. She would cut just the smallest amount of hair. And some would say like that's a waste of money. But for me, I didn't want to get big hair, like parts of my hair cut off. I just liked that little dusting. And I would go every two months and my hair grew so much from that. Just like getting that little bit of dead end off and off and off. 
um, so regularly and then after my hair was really long and healthy then you can you know skip to every three months or however long I can usually tell how I need a hair like I need a haircut right now just like by the feel of my hair but at that time that really helped my hair but it was like a light dusting like I was just be very vocal with your hairstylist like no I'm not kidding I seriously need you to cut the tiniest bit off I understand it might not make that big of a difference to my hair I don't care that's what I want and please do that and I'll be back soon to get another one I just want to go that route you know find a good hairstylist that will respect that and do that with you for some people you know you might not need to cut your hair if you're bleaching your hair dyeing your hair heat styling your hair all right like or in, if you're maybe a swimmer and you're in the water a lot you might want to cut your hair more often like I was saying but get a light dusting it might be more of a financial commitment, but I think personally it was worth it. But yeah, cutting off the dead ends is definitely going to help because what happens when we don't cut the dead ends off of our hair is that the hair, the breakage starts to go up and up and up. And that's when you see people get like really frill ends and they're really sparse because the hair keeps breaking and breaking and breaking. So when you cut it, it has a nice firm end and there's no, it's not going to be breaking up up and up and up and up in your hair and then your hair is going to be breaking a lot so haircuts are good for that but of course use your discernment with that everyone's a little different especially different hair types and i do acknowledge that my hair tips might be more so for people that have similar hair to me that is like wavy curly or maybe even straight hair you know people with a curlier hair might have different hair tips for that Anyways, I wanted to share that with you guys. I know it's a lot of information. It might seem overwhelming. And like I tell you guys with everything, I have built up this routine over the years. Like I said, I've been taking my hair, care of my hair very intentionally since high school, which was, I don't know, like almost 10 years ago. So I've had a lot of time and practice like taking care of my hair in this way. So it's easy for me to like do all of these things and really once you're in the habit of it it does not take me a long time to do any of these things guys i promise you it's just building the habit awareness of like oh this is what i should be doing how can i integrate this quickly into my routine so that i can have long healthy hair i'm gonna end this video now because it is probably gonna be so long i love you guys so much thank you for watching this video if you have more questions or anything uh about hair or like I'm not I don't know I'm not a professional but I can just share what I know let me know if you learned anything new from this video what you liked about it and I will see you guys in my next video bye guys